Hello and welcome to another nuclear craft video. Um, again, it's another fission reactor video. This time I want to go through how you might go about trying to design an actual nuclear reactor. Um, I said that I was going to make a video like this in the last video, uh, the fission spotlight. Um, where I basically just go through all of the basic mechanics of the different parts of the reactor, like how the coolers work, how the cells work, how the moderators work. But what I want to do now is make a video that sort of shows how you might go about trying to think uh, how to build a reactor. Um, I'm going to do two sort of separate parts of this video. One where you choose the type of fuel. Um, so in this case I'm going to be choosing LEU-235 fuel and then building a reactor around that fuel and I'm going to do a second part where you basically just build a reactor and then I'm going to show you a tool that has been made. Um, there's been two people involved with this. Uh, the first person is Jox, at least that's their name on Discord, and another person is Snarklord on Reddit and I've basically combined um, two of their fission nuclear craft calculators into a uh, another sort of Google Doc that allows you to calculate which fuel is best to use in the design that you've come up with. Um, but anyway, let's get started with the first uh, way of designing a reactor, which is for a particular fuel. So my example is going to be this uh, 3x3x3 LU-235 reactor. Now this is going to be exactly the same example that's on the Getting Started guide on the official FTB wiki. Um, so if you prefer a sort of text version of a tutorial, um, then head over to that page. It's a really nice page to get you started with Nuclear Craft. So this is effectively just the video version of that. Um, so what we're going to do is first of all try and um, work out how many cells we can get away with putting in this reactor. Um, so the first thing we want to think about is the fact that we've only got 27 spaces inside of this reactor and we know that the base power of this LU-235 um, if we check quickly LU-235 is 120 RF per tick but more importantly the base heat is 50 heat per tick all right now 50 heat per tick is uh, not that much really um, because if we look at these coolers you'll see that most of these coolers usually can cool at around the 100 heat per tick roughly mark. Um, now let's imagine for example that we put like say five cells in like this not touching. Well that would generate 250 heat per tick and we still have 22 spaces in the reactor so that's definitely enough space to deal with that sort of amount of heat. So the first thing to do is sort of try and work out um, how many cells and graphite you can get away with putting in the reactor. Um, now if you do the calculations um, just go through it in your head quickly. Um, let's imagine we try to put uh, four pillars of two cells connected with graphite. So each of these is basically going to be whatever amount of heat this pillar produces multiplied by four. Now each of these reactor cells are going to have an efficiency of two. That means they're going to be producing three times the amount of heat because remember the amount of heat that a cell generates goes up as the triangle number of the efficiency. So these are both going to be producing three times the amount of heat which is 150 heat per tick each and then the graphite block remember the rule for that is that it's one third times the base heat of the fuel multiplied by the efficiency so that's two thirds for each of the cells times the base heat so that's four thirds times the base heat which is around 60. So in total this pillar is going to be generating around 360 heat per tick. Um, we can multiply that by four and we get 1000 440 heat per tick. Now we can actually just test that quickly by putting some reactor casing to complete this structure. Oops. And we can see here that we are generating, if we check in the heat per tick, about 1440, 1466 heat per tick. Um, so obviously you can just use the GUI to actually check how much your design is going to generate. Now we can use that number, the 1466 heat per tick, and determine whether or not we have enough space to, to, to make the cooling viable. So we've used up 12 spaces in here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and we have a total of 27. That means we've got 15 spaces in there for coolers. Now that means that we're going to need roughly 100 heat per tick of cooling per cooler in the reactor. And you, as you can see here, uh, most of these reactors, uh, most of these coolers do cool at around 100 heat per tick. So I'm going to say that this is a design that might be worth trying out um, to cool. Um, so let's get going with that. So the first thing to do would be to try and work out which coolers are best next to these cells. Now there are a couple of options that we could go for. We could go for redstone coolers which must touch at least one reactor cell. Um, we're going to start cheap. We're going to start with basically just these coolers here. Um, 
we'll see, I'll, I'll show you why basically just for the purpose of the, the t tutorial um, but we're imagining this is sort of early game you don't have access to a lot of cryothium and stuff yet um, so our option may, might be a redstone cooler but the better option is actually a lapis cooler because that has to touch at least one reactor cell and one casing and all of these spots next to the cells are viable for that and it cools at a rate of 120 heat per tick rather than 90 so that is the better option and so we will put eight lapis coolers down here and so already that's 8 times 120, which is 960 heat per tick. So already we've done quite a lot of the cooling that we need to do. We only need to do about 500 heat per tick more cooling. The next thing to look at is the spaces between these graphite blocks. Now, there's an obvious candidate for this. Since um, there are two graphite blocks adjacent to each of these spots, um, we could go for a quartz cooler. That's 70 heat per tick. Must touch at least one active moderator block, such as graphite. But the glowstone cooler is obviously the best thing to go for. 130 heat per tick and must touch at least two active moderator blocks. So this is clearly the best thing to go for in this particular case. So we can put these in there. Now, if we check the amount of heat that we're generating in our reactor, we will find that we're doing all the cooling that we need to do. Minus 13 heat per tick overall, which means that our reactor is net negative on heat, and we're producing 2,240 uh, 2, RF per tick. So this is a totally stable LU235 3x3x3 reactor, so that's brilliant. Um, we really do not need to do any more cooling. Um, this thing is, is, is totally fine. Now, we could stay there, but let's imagine that we um, try playing with, s imagine we have access to some of the more expensive coolers, cryothium, liquid helium, etc, etc. Um, let's try and imagine that we wanted to just beef up the amount of power that we're producing. And we did something like putting an extra graphite block here instead of a lapis. Now when we close it back up again, we'll see the amount of power that we're generating is a bit higher, 2,640. So that's about a 20% increase in the power, so that's, that's, that's pretty good. But we can see here that we've got another 540 heat to deal with here. Um, so that means that, um, as it stands, our um, design is certainly not going to be good enough because we've only got three spaces lef left, and that means that we're going to need about 180 heat per tick of cooling, and none of the coolers reach that sort of level. So we're going to have to go back through the design and check where we can improve things. So the obvious place to start would be those lapis coolers on the bottom here. Um, we can see here that the cryothium cooler is a lot better, 160 heat per tick, and must touch at least two reactor cells. So first of all, um, we'll replace two of these lapis coolers with the cryothium. Now, why do I only replace two? Well, because um, we can also look over here at the tin cooler, which must be at least between two active lapis coolers along the same axis. So I've got two um, lapis coolers along the same axis here, and so this means that a tin cooler can go here. There we are. Next thing to look at is the copper cooler. The copper cooler must touch at least one active glowstone cooler, and so that is the obvious option here, next to all those glowstone coolers. And then finally on the top, we have this extra graphite block to, to work with, and so perhaps we want to go with a magnesium cooler, which must touch at least one reactor casing, while well, it's on the top of the design, so it will touch a casing, and needs to touch an active moderator block as well. So again, that's absolutely fine. Oh, of course, actually, what we could also do is replace these lapis coolers with cryothium as well. So let's do that quickly. So let's see. Still not quite enough. 49 heat per tick left. Um, so we're going to still have to go back inside and work out if we can improve things. Um, I'm wondering, on the bottom there, we could deal with those lapis coolers. So if we go back underneath here um, and just dig away, just destroy this and we'll put it back. But if we look here, um, perhaps we can actually improve on this. Um, so let's go back through the coolers that we have available. Well, we have the redstone that we didn't think about before. Um, the redstone can actually support a liquid helium cooler. Um, so that needs to touch at least a reactor casing. So that's a possibility in the middle here. Um, and it needs to touch a redstone uh, cooler. So maybe we should get a redstone cooler in. So first of all, we're going to have to replace a redstone cooler. Well, um, we're going to, that means we're probably going to have to replace one of these lapis coolers. Um, so we might as well replace both of them because this tin cooler is not doing anything um, and it has to go anyway for the space for the liquid helium. And we can now replace this other lapis cooler with a cryothium. So that's an improvement of 40 already, so that's a good start. Um, so before we had a tin and lapis, that's a total of 100 plus 120, so it's 220 heat per tick. Um, and we're going to be replacing it with 140 plus 90, which is 230, so that's an extra 10 plus an extra 40 from the cryothium. That must mean but surely we should just be able to cool this reactor at the rate we need to. So let's put it all back in, put the graphite back, put the glowstone back, the copper back in the middle, and surely I think 
this will be good. And there we are, zero heat per tick generators. It's a totally heat neutral reactor, cooling rate of 1900 heat per tick, which is equal to the amount of heat we're generating. And now we have designed with the extra more expensive coolers, a more efficient design. So this is basically how you go about um, designing reactors uh, for a particular fuel and a particular size. Um, you just have to play around with it, think about it through your head, and um, sometimes if you cannot deal with the cooling, you might have to go back through earlier parts of your design and change things around like I had to do on that bottom layer there. So that's sort of the idea. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an idea about how to actually sort of go about um, designing these reactors. Um, so the next part now I want to show you is the much easier way um, of designing reactors, but perhaps um, less useful in some cases. A lot of the time you'll be, especially when you're starting out, having to deal with LEU and um, HEU fuels, TBU fuels, which are those sort of fuels that are available at the start of the game. But once you start to open up a bit and you start to go down the, uh, the fuel tree a little bit, when you start to get lots of these depleted fuels and get all the different products and start creating americium, uh, curium, californium, I and you have lots of it available, then maybe you want to start designing good reactors and then find out which fuel is the best for that reactor design.